I have this particular PDF file and it's a scanned PDF and you cannot easily extract data using only Pymo PDF and we have tried the OCR method using Tesseract in the previous video so I'll put the link on that video as well so you can check that out and it was doing really good to extract the data but it was failing to keep the layout intact and we couldn't work on that extracted data to properly collect the data from this tables structure so in this video i'm going to show you how to use llm whisper to extract this OCR data and keep the layout intact and how we can do some string manipulation and get this data properly okay so please watch this till end i have this particular jupyter notebook and for this we need to sign up with unstract or like you know llm whisper and then you will get an api keys okay so you'll get this api keys you need to get this api keys copy that api keys you need to get this llm whisper api url then just copy that url and we need these two things to use llm whisper okay and you can try out in this playground as well if you want you can just upload a specific pdf file and see okay if it is extracting the data correctly or not and daily you can extract up to 100 praises at free of cost okay so that's reasonable for this demo purpose but if you need this for a real lots of pdf files then you need to sign up for their paid plans okay so we need api url we need api key and that's it and we need this llm whisper client you can find their documentation in this particular link so you'll find those links in the description so please check them out as well we have this code that we are just importing llm whisper client v2 llm whisper client exception from this and creating one instance of that llm whisper client v2 object okay and i'm passing this url and api keys so you need to provide those two things so let me just run this step so it will install all of this i already have done that so that's why it's saying that requirements already satisfied and then we need to send this file so you need to just go into the documentation and you'll see that okay we do have this particular method whisper and you can specify lots of parameter and you can even see that information here let me just run this you can see we need to send the file path of this particular pdf file and we need to pass the wait for completion true you can specify false and you can check then uh, what's the status or you can specify that okay wait for completion true and wait time is 200 second okay so if i just run this okay it will start extracting the data okay from this llm whisper client you can see it says whisper status called and it says status is processing and it says processed and then it extracted the data and it's saved in this whisper variable if you look into this extraction and result text then you'll see we do have those data like you know docushine involve envelope ids we have price tables we have electric fiber optics open card and so on and the nice thing about llm whisper is that it is keeping the structure intact although it's not super correct about this but you will get 90 to 95 percent accuracy properly you can see we do have this code columns nicely indented we have nominal pipe diameter unit of measure unit price so it is keeping the structure intact this is the marker for second page okay so you can see 115 and then we have 215 so if you need to extract data from a scanned pdf file and you need to keep the layout intact i will suggest you to try out llm whisper this is really really nice but if it's not a scanned pdf file then you can easily do this using pymo pdf you don't need this llm whisper okay you can easily manipulate the pdf file using pymo pdf but if you want to build out something that will work dynamically depends on pdf structure then you should try out llm whisper plus with another llm like you know chat gpt or google croc or any other llm then you will be able to extract data from any type of pdf files and you don't need to depend on the layout of that particular pdf files in this video i'm going to show you how to do this string manipulation and get the data out of this particular extracted data okay in the next video i'm going to show you how to use another llm beside this llm whisper to get the correct data from this extracted data okay so make sure you subscribe for upcoming videos so we have received this data now we need to do some manual experimentation okay so if you look into this then we do have this docker shine envelope so this is not important for me this line is not important for me this line is not important for me 
this one is important these are not that much important these lines are super important for me and you can see we do have eoc7 it's repeated in another line so that also another constant that we need to combine these two into one line okay and then this one is not important for me as well this one is not important for me what we need to do we need to remove those unwanted lines and we need to extract only the important lines now the next thing is that what I want to do, I want to get this table header as well, like, you know, this table name, okay? For that, I need some experimentation. If I look into this, just to split this line, and then you'll see that we have three space before this particular line, okay? And if you look into this, there are around six to seven space before this line. And if you look into this one, uh, those lines where it's repeated, there is around 90 to 20 different space in this line okay you need to split this into multiple lines and then you can experiment that okay how many space we have in this particular line so based on this what i want to do i want to remove unwanted lines i want to combine those repeated lines into one line with the previous line i want to get the table header and then i want to create a data frame out of this okay and that's what i have done in this one it says clean data using string manipulation so i have this count leading spaces so i want to count how many space we have before the text okay at the start of the string okay this is very simple function and then what i'm doing i'm just segmenting this result text based on this marker so basically this is the page identifier because i want to add the page number as well to that extracted data so that we can cross check easily okay now we do have table data this is a list and blank list group name this is none is header found so i'm using this true i'll explain later why and then we have this counter this is for page number okay for each segment that means each page right so i'm increasing the counter value and then i'm splitting this segment into multiple lines and then i'm checking if this particular line is a valid line for me or not okay and that's why i'm just trimming out this line dot strip and then i have this particular variable is valid equals to true and i'm saying okay if this line is a blank line it's not valid it's not needed for me okay if this line starts with hdd of flow reader response you'll see every page starts with this line hdd of flow reader response hdd of flow reader response that's not important for me that's not valid line if this line starts with docusign envelope id that's not important for me if a line ends with slash 15 that's the page marker that's not important for me if a line starts with price table that's not important for me if a line just equals to in or process that's not important for me as well if you look into this the last page then it says in and process so it's based on the experimentation based on understanding the data so it's highly dependent on the layout okay highly dependent or specific to this particular video file if we have some different structure in this particular video file it will not work and that's why you need the third approach i have another video on this i'll record that and i'll put that link in the description or in the card so check that out if you want to have a flexible that will incur some cost as well i'll explain that in depth in that video okay so i'm just removing those invalid lines and i'm saying okay if it is an invalid line then just count how many space we have and if it is less than five then that is the header line okay but if you look into this then you'll see that we do have some details description after this header line so i want to ignore those other lines after this header lines right so that's why i want to use this one that okay, if this is less than five that means it possibly a group or like table header now i'm saying okay if is header found if it's already found then that means you know it's from the previous one or it's the start that's why i said it's a true like you know is header found true initially it's true so it will say okay true then it will just get this group name equal to s line and is header found it will change this to false so what i am doing is that i get the first header line and i'm changing this is header found to false so in the next one when we have less than five character it, it will be false so it will not take that line as a group line okay now i'm checking if it is greater than four less than 20 that means that is this entry lines so i'm just checking that okay if this is the actually the header of this table so i don't need to add that data if it's a header that's why i'm checking if it's start with code and ends with init price then it's a header row so i don't want to uh, get that so i'll just say is header found equals to true and continue so it will just continue with the next one 
and then if it is not like if it is not the header row then it's actual data row that's what we need right so i'm just stripping this is string like you know split this by three space for this one and then strip all of this so it will part it out like you know it will create four units like you know uoc one as one entity this one is another item of that list this one is another this one is another so i'm just like removing those blank spaces and then uh, splitting into four different parts okay that's the points and then i'm creating this data points so this is the code this is the first points nominal pipe diameter this is the second point unit of measure third point and unit price i'm just removing this dollar sign and converting it to a proper float number that is the unit price and then we have this group so basically this group is the table header that is this group name and page number is basically the counter so i'm just appending this now if we have something that is more than 19 space that means that repeating rows okay so these rows okay these rows it has more than 20 space and less than 53 space and so these are based on experimentation so it's not coming out something like you know i just uh, mind it like you know type it out so you need to do some analysis on this and then you'll be able to identify that so i'm just taking the last data row and then I'm just appending that nominal pi of diameter with this current row. And that will, you know, concatenate these two line into one line. And that's it. So if I just run this, okay. And then if I just create a data frame out of this, then you'll see it's really, really nice view. So we have this code. We have this nominal pi of diameter, unit of measure, unit price, group, and page number. And if I just see, like, you know, unit price, so I have different unit price. If I want to see only data for page two, then I can see that and I can cross check the data as well. And I can see that, okay, this is sticks. So if I go into page number two, then you will see it sticks in multiple lines, like, you know, in another line. And it seems super nice that it's being concatenated into online. That's, it's really, really nice. Now I want to save this data to an Excel file. So I can just do this and it will save the data to an Excel file so that I can watch this and I can do further so it will save the data in an excel file and i can do further analysis and this is the extracted data we have code nominal pipe diameter and all of these other columns and that's really really nice so if you want to extract structured data from a scanned pdf file consider llm whisper and consider like my string manipulation or try out another llm there are still some issues with this all share there are some problems with this like you know if you look into this em3 this is from page two right if i go into this page two em3 and you can see 20 inchy 36 inchy and 24 inchy there is a x or cross sign but we don't have that one here so there will be some issues still but it's really really 95 percent correct so that's it for this video in the next video i will show you how to use llm whisper with link chain and another llm like you know open ai and how to get this data from that extracted data using another LLM instead of like you know string manipulation. So till then, have a good day.